Hello and welcome back to another episode of Chris's Secret Podcast. I am impressed that you found it. On this week's episode, I'm going to be going over the five biggest mistakes I made in my first year of podcasting and you will definitely want to stick around to the fifth and final mistake that I made because once I fixed it, which I did about a month ago, actually exactly a month ago, my subscribers have skyrocketed from about 300 all the way to over 7,000 subscribers just with this last mistake that I was making with my YouTube channel and with my podcast. Real quick before we jump in, all that I ask is that you subscribe to my YouTube channel. It would really, 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 really mean the world to me. I'm trying to get to 10,000 subscribers, which is kind of mind-boggling to think of because less than a month ago, actually less than a month ago, I had less than 1,000 subscribers, and now I'm trying to break 10,000. Kind of crazy what just one month and one little mistake uh, fixing it just skyrocketed my channel. So anyways... Without further ado, let's jump in. The number one thing on my list, which is my mistake was not getting a video editor quicker for my channel, all right? I used to spend hours and hours and hours and my poor wife would never see me because I'd be here in my office just editing videos nonstop and not necessarily like the long form podcast style because these are somewhat time consuming to edit, but it was more sort of the short form videos that I was making. I would spend hours on editing these shorts. Also, I'm not like some crazy good video editor by any means. I'm not bad, but I'm definitely not like incredible. And so I went out and if you haven't seen this video before, just go back and look at my video that I dropped last week on how to hire a virtual assistant out in the Philippines. And I did basically that same technique that I talk about in that video. I did it for video editors that are based out of the Philippines. So I hired a small little team of uh, like virtual assistant video editors out of the Philippines that I pay very little amount of money compared to what I would be able to get here in America. So I'm paying those video editors of mine about $5 USD an hour to edit videos for me. All right. They're actually really freaking good at editing videos. 75% of the shorts that are on my channel right now. So if you just go through and scroll through and look at them, probably 75% of those videos that have been posted in the last month have been from this team of video editors that I built out. All right. So this has allowed me more time to research new topic and come up with new ideas to talk about on the show. It's also allowed me to just record more content. So I've been able to do more content that is coming out here soon, whether it be like paintball related content or sales related content or real estate related content. It's just allowed me to record more stuff to make more videos. And then also, I am still putting in not the same amount of hours that I was before, but it has allowed me to still make my own shorts. So all the videos that they're editing for me, I'm able to put out and the ones that I create. So I'm just able to put out more content as well. So that was the first mistake that I made is I should have hired a video editor sooner. However, that is, I do have the luxury of, I have a full-time job. So if you don't have a full-time job, that part might not be as feasible. So you're just going to have to go out there and you're just going to have to spend more time editing videos, but again, don't get it twisted. I'm spending Today, with my tiny little YouTube channel that I make no money off of, I am spending anywhere from like 35 to 55 hours a week, a week working on this channel and on this podcast. So and now it also helps that I love it. I thoroughly enjoy doing it, so it doesn't feel like work, but just keep that in mind too. Even though I have a video editor like doing a lot of the work now, I'm still putting in like 35 to 55 hours a week on this podcast that makes me no money. So... There you go. That was the first thing that I wish I would have done sooner was hire a video editor. Second thing that I, or the second big mistake that I made with this podcast and with this YouTube channel was I didn't promote it at all on my personal, like my personal network. So because of that, it took me forever to get to a thousand subscribers on YouTube, which was like my personal goal. I've always wanted to make a YouTube channel that would get a thousand subs. And it took me so long since I did not promote it at all on my personal network. I think I made two or three posts, or sorry, shorts, or not shorts, what are they called? It's stories, stories on my Instagram. When I was first starting out, I made, I think, three stories about, not even like, hey, I have a YouTube channel. It was like, interviewed this cool person, but like not even shouting out that it's for my podcast. So I didn't promote it at all on any of my like personal networks. And I have 
yeah, I'm not like I'm like some super popular guy, but I got, you know, a little over 900 people that I am like, whatever, follow me on Instagram. I've got like another 1600 people that I am friends with on Facebook and then over 3000 LinkedIn connections. I've never promoted it on any of them ever once. Like I don't talk about it at all. People still think that I'm involved with Arslan Fleet, which was the rental car business I did back in the day because I promoted it all over my personal like networks and brand or like my, yeah, my personal sphere, social media sphere. People still think I do that because I promoted it so much. So in hindsight, I should have probably promoted this a little bit more on my personal uh, channel just so that I could have gotten to that thousand subscribers quicker. Also, these are, you know, I just listed, call it 5,000 people that know me, like me, are interested in what I'm doing, they probably all would be interested in checking out this channel. But I made this channel the Chris's Secret Podcast because I just more so wanted to do it just to see that I could hold myself to posting these videos every single week for an entire year. And if I could do that, then maybe I would start to branch out and try and promote it a little bit more. But that was one big mistake. I should have done that. That would have allowed me to get a bigger following even quicker. Also, probably could have gotten some better like feedback and critiques um, because those are friends and like connections that are hopefully there to see me succeed and try and help me and give me some advice to, uh, to switch things up. So anyways, that was my second mistake. Moving on to the third mistake that I made when making this podcast and YouTube channel, which is I did not pick a niche and I still haven't picked a niche. I've never niched down for this podcast or for this YouTube channel, which is, is a mistake if you're trying to grow quickly. And I've gotten this piece of advice from multiple successful like social media influencers and personalities and they all have told me you really do need to pick a niche you can have a niche and then deviate off of it into different areas but you should have like a central theme to your channel whether you want to make it sales whether you want to make it real estate whether you want to make it paintballing what whether you want to make it a sports podcast because i've done a couple of sports episodes so they've told me multiple people have told me that are much more successful than me when it comes to doing this like kind of YouTube content creator sphere, they've all told me to niche down. And I do agree. I do agree that I should niche down if I want to grow quicker. However, the reason I have still not niched down and I probably won't niche down is because also a lot of the same people that are giving me this advice, when I've talked to them, and, and kind of pick their brain on what they're doing. They, they've, it sounds like for a lot of them, the vast majority of them, it now feels like a job because they are now sticking to the specific thing. Even if they freak, even if I am the most avid paintballer in the world, if I then make my channel exclusively about paintballing, or at least that's the main topic. If I ever decide to, Hey, I actually think I'm going to start to like, I don't know, camping more, or actually I really want to start talking about you know, playing darts or something, you know, if I, I, whatever it is, I want to start talking about real estate. It, it's, you're going to have a whole audience of people like, yo, I thought you was like a paintball channel. Now you're just talking about real estate, like unsubscribe. And so I'm trying to, when I'm doing this, I'm trying to put out a wide variety of content that I am really interested in. Not because I necessarily want to grow it as quick as possible, but I want the people that are going to be subscribing to my channel and are following along and listening to my podcast and watching my videos. I want them to know that they're coming here and I'm the subject matter. Like what I think, am, like whatever I think is interesting is what they're going to be getting. It's not necessarily I'm only here to talk about real estate or I'm only here to talk about paintballing. No, you're, you're here for me. And then whatever I'm interested in is what you're going to be hopefully watching and enjoying and engaging in. Also, the end of the day, I'm doing this as like for fun right now. So that was my third, my third area that I messed up, or at least maybe a mistake was not picking a niche. But that's one of the mistakes that I'm not going to change. So I don't know if that's a good, good thing. Um, then the fourth thing is not utilizing this incredible studio that I went and built out. Uh, I haven't been utilizing it at all, really. So that is something that I'm going to try and do a better job of moving forward is utilizing this incredible studio space that I built um, because it's sick. And when people come to your channel or when people come to my channel specifically, if they're coming to check me out and see what I'm talking about and I've got like some janky looking green screen or the camera's all angled at me weird or I'm in like some Airbnb or hotel room, it doesn't look very professional. Now, 
end of the day, I hope they're there and listening to what I'm talking about, and I hope that they can find something that they can take away and either improve in their life or just put a smile on their face or make them laugh. That's what I'm here to do. I'm hopefully entertaining them at the end of the day. But on the other hand, if they come to my channel, and at least I know this from personal experience and, once again, from talking to other successful content creators, if they come to your channel and it's you like sitting with like freaking cardboard boxes behind you looking all unprofessional, they're only going to give you like the quickest smidgen of time to convince them that what you're talking about is worth their time and effort to listen to. Whereas if I have, you know, hopefully what this is, a professional looking backdrop, they might give me a little bit, a smidgen more time instead of instead of like one second to like five seconds of time, they might give you 60 seconds. Be like, all right, he at least is successful enough to make it like make the background look somewhat legitimate and have a camera sitting there steadily with a little ring light behind him. I'll at least just I'll listen to him for like 30 more seconds. All right. And that's all I'm really looking for is, is I, I would like to have the chance to at least give, you know, give me 30 seconds. Give me 30 seconds. And then if you find what I'm talking about interesting, listen to the rest of it. So that would be something that I messed up. I wouldn't build the whole thing. That's the other thing that's silly is if you didn't have the resources and the time to build out a cool studio. All right. That's fine. No worries. No harm. No foul. Just work with what you got. But I freaking built this silly thing uh, like I need to use it. So anyways, that's what I'm doing now. Now, I will say I am I am curious to know what you all think. I've done a couple of the sports podcasts where I walked around like this and talked and, and those are fun. I'll probably do some more of those coming out soon. But I normally, when I do kind of my more businessy updates on my podcast, whatever type of videos, normally I'm sitting down, kind of looking at the camera, which is what like 99% of all like podcaster, YouTuber people do. I kind of like when I did the sports one where I was walking around and talking, I felt more, it felt more natural because let's be real. I'm just sitting here talking into a camera. Like there's it's a little awkward. <laughs> so when you're up walking around talking, it feels a little bit more natural. So I want to try and start doing that for every podcast episode I'm putting out, unless there's a reason I need to be sitting there. If I have like a slide deck that I'm going to be talking about or going through, but I'm going to start doing, I think most of these interviews or most of my podcast episodes when I'm up and, and mobile. Now I'll try and do it with a legit backdrop like I've got right now, but I am curious. Let me know in the comments if you like the me standing up talking or if you'd rather same background, but me just sitting down stationary looking at you the whole time. And if you're listening on Apple or Spotify, just know you can watch, you can watch my podcast episodes. Uh, just jump over to my YouTube channel. Uh, I think it's at Chris's secret podcast. So just find me with that handle. So with that being said, let's move on to my fifth and final mistake that I made in the first year of doing this podcast. And this, this one mistake I fixed a month ago and you, you can see it on my channel. I'll put it, I'll put it like right here. I'll put it in the video. You can see that just by fixing this one mistake, my channel grew from about 300 subscribers to over 7 thousand subscribers from this one mistake. All right. Now, before I tell you this one, the biggest mistake I made, the fifth and final mistake, all that I ask is that you subscribe to my YouTube channel. It means the world to me. It makes my heart happy. And without further ado, the fifth and final mistake that I made with my podcast episode is not putting out more content, which probably going to make a lot of y'all mad. A lot of y'all are probably going to be annoyed that I just said that. You're probably going to be like, that's what I waited for this whole time is you to say you didn't make more content. Dislike button. Please just hear me out before you smash the dislike. I would love it if you hit the, the like button. Look, I was making one podcast episode, one to two podcast episodes a week, but my goal has always been, look, I want to put out one episode every single week without fail. And I've done that. I've literally not missed a single week. I think there was one time where I missed a week on Spotify because... I accidentally scheduled it in the wrong week, so whatever. But anyway, I have not missed a single week <laughs> uh, of putting out a new long-form podcast video, all right? However, I would go in waves of one month, I would post a short every single day without fail, and then the next month, I would post like no shorts. Shorts are sh short-form videos. Those are the vertical videos that you see on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. That's what a short-form video is, all right? Um, and so I would make the long-form videos, which is like the podcast, 
However, I wouldn't make short form videos. So I would make a short, I would like make like a short form video for every single day in a month. And then I would just stop making the short form videos for the next month. Cause I was like, God, this is so time consuming. I hate making these shorts. It takes so much time. So then I'd stop. And then I'd have a cool interview or a cool guest come on my podcast. And then I'd make a bunch of shorts for that one episode and I put them all out and my channel would start to get a little traction, get a couple subs. And then I would stop again. And then I went on my honeymoon and I scheduled out a bunch of shorts like for an entire because I was gone on my honeymoon for like a month. And so I had all I had shorts dropping every single day for an entire month. And what was crazy, and this is where like the first light bulb moment uh, happened, is these shorts. <laughs> I don't even know if you can find many of them. I think I have deleted, removed them from my profile. Um, but maybe I'll maybe I'll put one in. No, I'm not even going to do that. But you can go back and find them. And these shorts that I posted, I posted one every single day while I was, while I was out. So for in a month straight, I had a short dropping every single day. All right. These shorts were the biggest, biggest pile of steaming hot garbage. All right. I made these shorts with something called, I think it's called a clip optus pro or something like that. It's like one of these new AI tools. It's made by the same people that make chat GPT and you could just send just like it, originally when I was doing it, it was a discord. Now they have like a whole website. And so you would send this discord server, a link to a YouTube video. They would then download that YouTube video, s splice it up into a bunch of little YouTube shorts. All right. Or just short form videos. And, and they would email them back to you. All right. Or it'd send them like you get then like download them from this link. All right. So I did that for like five different or like three different podcast episodes. Uh, I sent them this, this, like odd, like link to my channel and they would just make the channel, like make these little, uh, like short form videos for me. All right. Well, the short form videos that this little sorry AI model made, I mean, don't get me wrong. They were good. Like, or they weren't good. They were horrendous. And I see them all over social media now of people making these like short form videos. Horrendous. It, they were so painful to watch. It would clip it up and like they wouldn't actually keep the whole flow of the conversation going. It would be, I'd be talking about one thing and then just jump to a totally different subject. And then they would have the, the subtitles going or whatever you call them, captions. And it would be like, I'd be talking and the captions, would be, everything would be spelled wrong, which for me, I don't really care because I'm like fucking basically dyslexic as, as F. I can't type worth shit. But regardless, there were spelling errors across the whole thing. And then if I was interviewing somebody, like their face would come in like super big. And then when they would stop talking, my face would pop. It was awful. They were the ugliest, ugliest, ugliest videos you've ever seen. However, I posted one every single day for a month while I was out on my honeymoon. And what do you know? That was, that was up until like this past month, the biggest month I've ever had on YouTube was the month where I was out of the country, traveling the world, not looking at my YouTube stats once. And the, my channel growth went from like, I mean, at that point I had probably a couple hundred subs. I probably had like a hundred. And by the end of the month I had 200. So I like more than doubled my subscriber count on YouTube by posting just God awful clips. But all I did, the big key was that I posted one every single day. All right. So then I decided, and then I, I kind of got back on the train. I was posting every single day. I was like, Damn, I really want to break a thousand. So I was posting every single day. And then it was, won't forget this. It was February 12th. All right. My channel started March 12th. So I was like, I, I, I really, I need to hit a thousand subs. Like I need to, if I spent an entire year posting this much, like posting every single week on this stupid podcast and all I have to show for it is at that point was like 500 subscribers or something like that. Maybe not even. I was like, I like, I, I won't be able to like, I don't mind. Like now I can quit. Like I, I did it. I, my whole goal was a thousand subs and I did it. So I was like, I cannot, I cannot let myself go an entire 12 months and only have like 500 subs to show for it. I've already spent, I mean, not that much money, but I've spent like a good amount of money on this silly podcast. And so I was like, you know what? F it. I watched, I watched a few like YouTube videos on like how many shorts should I be putting out a day? What's the max amount of shorts I should be uh, like uploading. And there were a couple of videos that talked about, you know, you could, they didn't say you should, they said you could upload as often as three to four shorts a day. And so I watched this one lady talk about it. She had like 1,800 or 18,000 subscribers. And she talked about how she posted three times a day. 
And she was like, it was, it was the worst. I had like, I had like burnout. I was getting so stressed out, blah, 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 blah. Like, it's not a, like a sustainable thing, but I did see it was my most, uh, viewed month ever on YouTube with, you know, however many views she got and the most subs I've ever gotten in a single month by doing, uh, posting three times a day. All right. And so I was like, you know what? F it. Um, uh, just looking back at the past, my best month was when I posted every single day for an entire month. I'm going to post three to four times a day from February 12th to March 12th. And if by March 12th, me posting three to four times a day, which keep in mind, this lady only posted three times a day. I was like, I'm posting three to four times a day. And if, if my subs don't go at over a thousand, I quit. I told my wife this. I said, Christina, you already know you're dating a failure of a podcaster, but I'm going to make it official in one month from today. If I don't have a thousand subs, uh, I'm done. So what do I do? First day. Now also, so, so I, I start, I have like, you know, some backlogged content and I just scrunch it all down into what was supposed to be posting over the course of a month. I scrunch it all down and it was basically going to be all, all of my content that I'd worked so hard on was going to come out in like, instead of a month in, in 10 days. Cause I was doing three to four times a day. And so I was like, well, crap, now I, I need new content for the rest of the month. And so that's where the video editors came in. I was like, uh, that's it. I'm, I'm hiring a video editor, not just one video editor. I might hire a few video editors. So I went on onlinejobs.ph. If you want to use it, link down below. Anyways, I went on there looking for a video editor, $5 an hour, thousands of applicants, everyone wanting to do it. I gave them different tasks that I wanted them to like, Hey, this is how I want you to edit the videos for me. This is what I want. I found a team of very good video editors and I, I really am now solely relying on like two of them to edit these like shorts for me. All right. And so I then started sending them shorts to edit. I then was still working on shorts to edit. And within like a week, maybe two, I had a just a ton of shorts, like an ungodly amount of shorts. So I just scheduled them all out. I was like, screw it. I'm scheduling all of these out. All right. It is crazy how quickly my views and my subs just start going. It, it, like I remember vividly, I remember vividly starting this process and be like, I don't know if it's going to work. And within a few days I went from like five or 600 subs to just barely under a thousand, just barely under a thousand. And I was like, I don't know, Christina, like we're, we're getting close. We're getting close. And then I have another hack that I did and I'll make a whole separate video on how I did this, but there's something called YouTube promotions where you can promote certain shorts. And so one of my shorts that one of my video editors made, not that I made one of my video editors made for me was normally for me, every thousand views equals one subscriber, which is crazy, but that's pretty consistent for me and my channel, or at least on short form videos, every thousand views equals one subscriber. All right. And so I had this one video that was about like how corrupt potentially, you know, I'll let you decide for yourself, but it was uh, Patrick bet David, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but he's like a big entrepreneurial guru, somewhat of a, like now turning into a political commentator type guy. He was talking about how corrupt he thinks BlackRock, George Soros, like this whole, like the, the, that side, like hedge fund side of America is. And so this video that I, that my video editor made had like 5,000, 6,000 views, which is like, was it's typical for me, like on a better video. But normally for 6,000 views, I would expect anywhere from like four to eight subs. All right. Is what I would get from that. Typically it's like a one, 1,000 views equals one sub. So you'd expect 6,000 views, six subs. Well, this one had 6,000 views, like 25 subscribers. And I was like, what? That's like way more subscribers to views than normal. All right. And I dabbled with a little bit of YouTube promotions and I'll have some videos coming out later about like what I found with these YouTube promotions. But then what I did is I just promoted that one video. I spent, I think it was $5, all right, <laughs> $5 promoting this one video. And I was like, I don't know, we'll see what happens. Go to bed, wake up in the morning, broke a thousand. And I was like, let's freaking go, let's go. So then go to bed the next night. I'm at like a thousand and like a couple hundred, all right, like 1,100, which was crazy considering it took me like six months to get a hundred subs. And so I get like 200 subs in one day off of this one YouTube promotion. Go to bed next morning, wake up at like 1700 subs. And I was like, I went to bed at like 11. I woke up with 17. And so this kept happening. 
off of a five dollar promotion. All right. And so, like, I obviously added more money to, like, this one YouTube video, and then I went back and looked through all my old videos and was, like, seeing if there's any discretion on subs to, to uh, views to subs and promoted a few others. I probably spent in total on YouTube promotions to this point maybe $200 on promotions, all right, which I've spent a lot more money building this crap and buying these mics and buying all the editing software. So I was like, you know, 200 bucks. Compared to all other crap I spent money on is a great deal. However, I also was thinking before I made this video that that was going to be one of my biggest mistakes is I was going to say not doing these YouTube ads because I made so many subs from it. Well, I went back and calculated how many subscribers I got from the promotions, all right, which is what I thought all my like subs were coming from, to reality, like like to to just finding me from organic views. Turns out all of my all of my YouTube promotions, you know, the whole measly two hundred bucks I spent on YouTube promotions netted me around 1700 subscribers which is a crap load like that's sick that's the first threshold you need to be able to monetize your channel is a thousand subs all right so that's crazy this whole time though i had over 7000 subscribers thinking that 6500 of them all came from these youtube promotions that's not correct only only 1700 of them came from my now channel that has basically 7,500, maybe more by the time you're watching this video, subscribers. So it's really only like, you know, a uh, uh, seventh, I don't know what the right term, or like what the exact percentage is. I'm recording this on my phone, otherwise I take out my calculator and get you the exact percentages. But, you know, it's actually a much smaller fraction of my subs are coming from YouTube promotions, which I thought they were coming from. In contrary, they're all coming from the fact that I'm posting a crap load of videos because my channel was going from getting on average in the 28 day span, I was getting maybe a thousand views over the course of an entire month. Now I just had like my, my best, I mean, each day ends up being my best day, but as we're recording it today, I just broke the best because I always had a goal. Of, like I want to get more than like 10,000 like views over 28 days. Then I, I broke that at the beginning of this posting every day or four, three times a day challenge to wanting to break a hundred thousand views in 28 days to now I'm getting over a quarter million views on just YouTube alone over a, a 28 day period because I just hit my 28th day of doing this, uh, like two days ago. So that is, that is my big rant on how important it is just to put out more content and keep in mind, it doesn't even necessarily have to be super, super high end content. Obviously, obviously, if you can get to the point where you can make videos as engaging as possible, as entertaining as possible, and then have video editors like behind you making these edits as incredible as possible, then yeah, you're going to blow up and you're going to be cool. You're going to be the next Mr. Beast, A-Rack, other YouTubers that I don't know their names of. You're going to be like one of these like super Joe Rogan. Like you're going to be one of these like you're going to be the pinnacle like that. That is, that's what it takes. Like, you, like, I don't think people even understand specifically for like a Joe Rogan type. He's putting out so much content. It's insane. I mean, he's putting out like two to three hour long podcasts, like three to four times a week, then clipping them up in the shorts, then clipping them up into like interview clips. And it's insanity. It's just insane how much he's putting out. And so that would be my biggest thing is, is that I messed up with. And I even knew it from the beginning. I just didn't know to the extent of how much content I would need to put out. But that was my biggest mistake at the beginning of this is I knew I wanted to focus on quantity over quality. However, the quantity that I was putting in that I thought was a good amount wasn't even close to the, the actual amount I needed to do. And really, if I wanted to really take this to the next level, I really should be putting out probably more long form videos here soon. So that is a goal of mine is, is I'm going to try to keep up with the three, three to four shorts a week or sorry, three to four shorts a day. I'm going to try and keep that up for another month. And then on top of that, I'm going to try and put out, obviously I'm going to put out my weekly episodes that, that, you won't see me missing one of those. Uh, but I'm going to try to, on top of putting out the weekly episodes, trying to put out like at least one other additional video a month as well, just to 
get the content out there. Also, the more content you do, the more reps you put in, the better you're going to get at this stuff. So to recap them real quick, it's not getting a video editor soon enough. It's not promoting my podcast with my personal network. Third was not picking a niche, not niching down. Fourth was not utilizing this amazing studio that I wasted a bunch of money building out, not utilizing it enough. And then fifth and most importantly, not making enough content. So with all that said, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's all that I ask. It means the world to me. We're trying to break 10. We're trying to break 10,000 subs. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's go. Uh, and with that being said, figure out some ways. I really should probably change my outro. I need to figure out a new outro because my outro has always been figure out some ways to make some passive income so I can see you out on the pickleball court or on the slopes. Until next time, peace. I really need to figure out a new one because basically you just heard this entire rant. Nothing about what I'm doing right now is passive. So <laughs> with that being said, my new outro is going to be figure out some ways to make some money doing something that you love. Easy as that. So that I can see you on the pickleball court. Somehow making money off of it. See you on the slopes. Somehow making some money off of it. See you renovating your freaking guest bedroom and hopefully making some money off of it. Because I think it's just not even honest. It's disingenuous of me to tell people to find some ways to make some passive income when really the most important thing is finding some ways to make some money by doing something that you love. So with all that said, peace out, y'all. And until next time.